الله أكبر الله أكبر إن الحمد لله حمدا كما ينبغي له هو الولي الحميد حمدا خالدا مع قلوده لا منتهى له دون علمه نحمده تعالى كما حمد نفسه بنفسه نحمده تعالى كما حمده النبيون والصديقون والشهداء والملائكة المقربون له الحمد في الأولى والآخرة له الحمد دائما وأبدا له الحمد على الرضا وله الحمد حتى يرضى وله الحمد على حمدنا إياه نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to guide and bestows the guidance and the basira and the hikmah upon, no one, nothing can misguide or mislead that individual. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to let go astray, to be misguided and to not find the clear path, then if we all came together, to compel this individual to become of the guided, we would not be able to do so. The only one who controls and holds and upholds the guidance is Allah. Wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa hu. I bear witness that there is no Lord worthy of worship except Allah. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his final messenger. My dear beloved brothers, fathers, mothers and sisters, I counsel myself primarily than all of you to be conscious of Allah, to think of Allah, to put Allah as your primary regard, to be thoughtful and mindful of Allah, Regardless of what time it is, of where you are, of who you are, with whom you are, and what you're doing, be conscious of Allah. Think of Allah. When you are out and about in the heat of the day, in the sweltering heat of the summer, and you will see the scantily clad, those who have stripped themselves of their morals and their clothing, be mindful of Allah when it comes to your sight, so lower your gaze. When you see the filth that is being propagated, that is being introduced and called to and invited to, be mindful of Allah and remember Allah. If you remember Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you. If you are conscious of Allah, Allah will uphold you. And what's even greater, what's even better, is that if you are of those who are mindful of Allah, you will be guaranteed. You will be guaranteed success in this life and in the next. And you will be of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala claims as His companions, as His dearly beloved. As he said in the Qur'an, in his words, and the greatest words are the words of Allah. Words that cannot be mimicked, cannot be duplicated, cannot be altered, cannot be fabricated. Words that were not created, they are the words of Allah, they are eternal, just as He is eternal. He says, after I seek refuge in Him from the devils and their whispers, Subhanahu 
بشرى في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة الله أكبر أولياء الله those who Allah سبحانه وتعالى loves and they love him in return those who believe and have taqwa in him those who believed in him and were mindful of him لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون there's nothing to fear for them they will never taste sorrow or sadness they have glad tidings لهم البشرى they have a guarantee in this world dunya of fil and in the afterlife may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of them and our families of them and those who we love of them allahumma amin these are the words of allah the greatest words are the words of allah and the best of all examples the best of all role models was the example of muhammad abu al-qasim sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and the worst of all the matters, the most destructive of all the matters, are the innovations, the fabrications and alterations that people have tried to weave into this pure, blessed deen of Allah. They have tried to taint this pure deen of Allah. When we have two credible sources, the Quran, and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything else that does not coincide or contradicts the Qur'an and the sunnah is not from us. It is rejected. That is why a lot of common practices, they strand from cultures and opinions. They have no merit from the Qur'an or the sunnah, but people will deem them as a deen. These are called bid'ah. And that person will worship Allah seemingly upon this misguidance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not reward them by anything because if the knowledge has reached you that we have a clear-cut authentic understanding from the Quran and the Sunnah you must leave aside your opinions you must leave aside your forefathers practices this is what it means to submit to this deen of Allah and to follow the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I warn myself and all of you to be careful and be cautious of this deviant practice. Ahibbat al-kiram amma ba'd. A man enters this masjid and his way was a journey. It was a long, arduous, journey. Perhaps he's been away or she has been away for years, months. Whatever the cause may be, that person perhaps was busy with life, got lost in the hustle and bustle of the dunya, was chasing this world, and subsequently lost their way. And they have not come to this masjid. They have not worshipped Allah in such a long time. And the sins have piled up on their back. And they're becoming hefty upon their hearts. And yet this person, he seeks to repent. He seeks to come back to Allah. She seeks guidance. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instills the need, the desire to come to his house, the masjid, this house. And it so happened that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought this individual nearby on a Friday and instilled this feeling within them to repent and to come closer to Him. So that person was compelled, you see. They were guided by Allah. And they were just mere blocks away. And they looked at the time and they looked at the calendar and it was a Friday. And everything coincided, so they came. They came seeking Allah. They did not have time to prepare. They did not have time to perhaps take a shower or to dress in the proper attire. And what is the proper attire, you may ask? It is anything which is mastur and clean. 
Perhaps they just got out of the gym, so they came in their gym attire. Perhaps that brother came in shorts and a t-shirt or a tank top. Perhaps she came in a pair of pants and a long blouse. Regardless of how they came, they came because they were compelled to repent to Allah. So when they enter from those doors, how did you greet them? How did you look at them? Did you scoff? Did you ridicule? Ask yourselves, look at your neighbor, your brother or your sister next to you. And subhanAllah, the reason for this khutbah is because the summer days are long. And people now, alhamdulillah, have ample time. And you've seen many new faces in the masajid. You must be welcoming to every face that comes here, every person. For every one of you has a place in this masjid, in this house, in the place of Allah. So how did you greet him or her when you saw them? Wearing those clothes or that jewelry or that hairstyle? Did you scoff? Did you ridicule? Did you demean? Or were you open-hearted and open-minded and greet them with an open smile and welcome them? قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الصحيح إن أحبكم إلي وأقربكم مجلسا يوم القيام مني وأقربكم مني مجلسا يوم القيامة محاسنكم أخلاقا The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the most beloved of you he started it with love لماذا why because if we sit together and we can't counsel each other and eat with each other and laugh with each other and walk with each other and hike with each other but there is no love then these are mere activities they are dry they have no essence so he said the most beloved of you to me to who to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the most beloved to allah and the closest of you in proximity on the day of Qiyamah, on the day where every single human being and every single jinn, in every single malak, in every single creature will desire the simplest of comforts. It is a day of reckoning, a day of intense agony. Khamsuna al fayum. 50,000 years, sana, khamsuna alfa sana. And you will stand naked. Not a crack, not a crevice, not a seat, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And the sun is just above the heads. Ashams fawqar ru'us, la dhilla wa la julus. Except for the comforting shade of Allah and the comforting companionship of the anbiya wa salihun wa shuhada on the day of qiyamah the most beloved and the closest of you to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam are those of you who have the best character are the best in conduct ahasinukum akhlaqa those who were lenient those who are easy, those who are comforting, those who are welcoming. Are we those people? And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa inna abghadakum ilayya, a'udhu billah. Wa inna abghadakum ilayya, wa ab'adakum minni majlisan. La hawla wa And the most despised of you, Despise. And the furthest from me on Yawm Al Qiyamah are those of you who have Suq Al Khuluq, who have a negative, bad character. And then he elaborates, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and listen closely to the characteristics mentioned. There are specific three. 
And they all have to deal with the tongue. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Masawi'ukum akhlaqa al-thartharoon wal-mutashaddiqoon wal-mutafayyikoon. Three categories of the worst character conduct. The first is a thartar, the one who speaks too much. He or she speaks about everything at all times. They know it all. Thartar. Kathir al kalam, Kathir al haki. He speaks about things that have nothing to do with them. None of their business, but. I have an opinion on this matter. I know the best. Constantly speaking. To speak in a demeaning, boastful manner. To speak above people. To demean them with your speech. And the last. And this is dangerous. Al-Mutafayyikun, Al-Mutakabbirun. Those who are arrogant when they speak to others, they demean them and look down on them. <coughs> and they use words from the vocabulary that no one really can understand or interpret. Linguistically, they make themselves feel and seem as if though they are scholars and they know everything and they are the best. So you come to the masjid and the brother or the sister looks at you and makes you feel as if though you are a kafir. Because they will tell you, qala shaykh kada, qala kada, qala kada, this is haram. They will put you down with, your, with their words, with their knowledge, quote unquote. All of these three characteristics have to deal with one aspect, the tongue. The tongue and how to speak, how to speak to people, how to address people. Because you can say one word in one moment that can change a person for the entire life. And let me give you an example that occurred here in this masjid, the house of Allah. Some of the youth, they come to play basketball on a regular basis. So they invited one of their non-Muslim friends to come and join them at the masjid to play basketball, to perhaps introduce him to Islam. So they're playing basketball and that non-Muslim, he comes to sit in the lobby just to relax. And a Muslim man walks in and he looks at this young man. And he said words that destroyed any potential destroy this individual for life. He said, what are you doing here? You cannot wear that here. He was wearing shorts. He didn't even ask him, who are you? What's your name? Welcome. Salamu alaikum. Regardless, he's here in the masjid. What are you doing here? You can't be here dressed like that. Because he's wearing what? Shorts. Huh? What if he was a Maliki? What if he pertained to the Maliki fiqh? Pay attention. Did you know that in the fiqh al-Maliki, I can pray with shorts? It's makroh, yes, but I can pray in shorts. Did you know that? And the knee is not awra, it's above. In the Maliki fiqh. Specifically, it's one hand above the knee. Al-awra al-mughallada wa al-ghair al-mughallada. I'm not going to get into too many details, but perhaps he was a man. Or perhaps it didn't dawn on you that in the Hanbali madhab, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentioned that the most significant shart, condition of salah is to pray on time. So if a man was in the desert, and he had nothing to cover himself with. He was naked. And the time of Salah entered. What does he do? He prays naked. This is in the Hanbali method. 
Yes, you're stunned, I know. What I'm trying to say and illustrate here is don't be so quick to judge and think you are the most knowledgeable person. And don't be so quick to judge and demean others because of what they are wearing and how they came to the mess. Maybe that person had no time to change. Taban al-asl is to come to come beautify to the masjid, dressed properly with clean clothes, covering yourselves. But perhaps that brother or sister just could not come in time. They didn't want to miss salah. Do we demean them? Do we push them away? Kalla. La. This is not from the arrogance. This is not from the ikhlaq. This is not how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught his ummah. Aqulu ma tasma'un astaghfirullahi wa lakum min dhamm astaghfiruh anna huwa al-ghafur Brothers, move forward, move forward and fill in the gaps, inshaAllah. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Ibad Allah, ilamu anni wa hibu. When dealing with people in general, but more specifically with Muslims, you have to have two critical aspects. And in order for you to give nasiha or to even carry or conduct a simple conversation with someone, you have to have these two aspects. Al-Hikmah wal basira Pay attention, I'm going to conclude very fast. Al-Hikmah wal basira Ma al-Hikmah? What is al-Hikmah? Al-Hikmah hiya sunnah. Bil-asr. It is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is wisdom as to how to deal with people. When to say something to someone. On what tone to say that to someone. With what lingo. Did you know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to speak to specific tribes in their lingo? He used to speak in their dialect. Why is that? Because it's relative. He's building relations. He's building bridges. And there's, there's an opinion circulating in this community that you cannot give a khutbah on the member in English. This is a good opportunity to bring this point up. This is a good one. Some people say it's haram, it's not accepted. Allah yahdina ajma'in. Let me tell you something. What is the objective of the khutbah? It's to deliver a general message to the specific populace which are Muslim about obtaining that which is the best, the masalih, and defending and pushing away that which is a mafsada. This is Every aspect of Islam has to do with jalb al-masalih wa daf'i al-mafasid. The asal is to deliver the khutbah in Arabic, yes. But if I stood here and I spoke to you in French, je comprends le français? Or I spoke to you in German and I gave a khutbah in German, would you obtain anything? No. The majority of the populace speaks English, thus we try to deliver the khutbah in English. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ And we have not sent a messenger to his people except by their tongue. لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ لِتْبِيَانِ To inform them, to give them the news. The knowledge. So for those who have a difficulty grasping this, I can deliver the entire sermon in English except for the Quran, which is in Arabic. Hmm? That is from the wisdom, subhanAllah. Because that is the essence of the khutbah. So it's not just knowledge, sah? Because if I stood here and spoke to you in Arabic and gave you everything that I know and I don't know very much, you would not get anything. Subhanallah. And the basira. The second aspect you must have is basira when, when advising or counseling or even speaking to someone. What is basira? In layman's in English, insight. 
To see more than what the eyes could see. Hmm? To see more than what the eyes can see. To the ability to reflect deeply, consider others, and consider more than what's in front of him. And this is very important. Muhimma. Muhimma. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, when he was asked by Rasulullah sallam, he said, Ya Mu'ad, do you know the rights of Allah over his slaves? So he said, you and Allah know best. He said, the rights of Allah is that he be worshipped alone without any partners. And then he went silent. And then he said, O oh Mu'ad, do you know the rights of the people over Allah? Allahu Akbar. You have a right over Allah. He said, Allahu wa Allah, Rasulu wa He says, Allah, you know best. He said, if they worship him alone, without any partners, then he will never punish them. So Mu'ad, he received this great news. This is news of Tawheed and Aqeedah. He says, Ya Rasulullah, Ala ubashir al nas. Can I inform the people? Shall I tell them? Qal al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, La, fa yattaki. He says, No. I gave you the knowledge, but let me give you the basira, the hikmah. Don't tell them now. He had the knowledge. But the wisdom was to hold it because at the time Islam was just starting. The people were still grasping Tawheed. They were still in the first stages of establishing the deen within their hearts, the iman within their hearts. So if you told them this, they would let go. Yet tekinu, they would rely. So after he told them, that is the wisdom. So if you just gave all the knowledge to someone, you have to give it an opportune time. I'm reminded by one simple incident that occurred in my life. One of my good friends, may Allah protect him, he embraced Islam, this is years ago. He embraced Islam from a Buddhist tradition. He was from Vietnam. And he loved Islam, he came into Islam. And he was Muslim for about two years. And he, was, he had an earring. We never said anything to him about it. Just entered Islam, learning the basics, Tawheed, who is Allah, how to worship Allah. Two years went by. None of us said one word about the hearing. We know the hukum, we know the ruling for men in hearings. But we didn't care to say it. Why? Because it's still starting. Within those two years, I remember it like it was yesterday. We were sitting, having lunch, and the conversation was going, and somebody brought up the aspect of tashabbuh bin nisa, of mimicking the beautification of women, and we brought up the issue of the earring. And he was sitting there, silent, looking at us. After the conversation, he looked at me and he said, Why didn't you tell me? I said, Well, oh, it's, it's okay. It's, this is something that's progressive, slowly. And you know what he did? And he threw it. Had we said it right away, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't walk like that, you can't sit there, you can't do that. Habib, when in akhraq, have character, have etiquette. Wallahi, I see so many of you, mashallah, you are the leaders of this deen. Love one another, welcome one another. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are the light and the beacon that carries the banner of Tawheed. And make us of those who accompany the Anbiya, the Sadiqoon, and the Shuhada. Allahumma ja'al jama'ana hada jama'ana hukuma. Wa la taj'al min bayinna shaqiyya ta'ala mahuma. Allahumma raddana ilayka rabdan jameela. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt. Wa aafina fi man aafayt. Wa tawallam Allahumma fi man tawallayt. Rahmat Allahumma bil atfal al-yatam. Min nisai al-thakala. الشباب الحياة اللهم اجعلنا هادين مهديين غير ضالين ولا مذلين اللهم اجعلنا هادين مهديين غير ضالين ولا مذلين صل اللهم وسلم وبارك وانعم على النبي المصطفى على الرسول المجتبى وعن آله وأصحابه من اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته لا يبدين وأخذ دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين